Good afternoon. Good day. Good day. Uh, how's everybody doing? Hopefully you're having a fantastic day so far. Obviously, my name is Prosper Tarovinga and I'm, uh, yes, Maxel Gravis. Thank you so much for tuning in. I've been checking out a few of your live videos. Good work, my man. Good work, my man. Um, obviously, for those that are tuning in for the first time, uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, this is the Lunch and Learn with Prosper Tarovinga, where every single day at 2 p.m. AEST, we sit around here and then we talk about stuff that would help you market scale and grow your business so that you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Um, it is my belief that um, every online b business should actually be profitable and enjoyable. And I believe that if you're a business person who's out there, you should be able to create form and relate to those that you're going to be demanding money off of. So you're tuning in from Anchorage in Alaska. Wow. Great stuff. Hope you're keeping warm out there. All we ever see about Alaska around here is the snowy mountains and stuff like that. So pretty much every single day at 2 p.m. AEST, we sit around here and I teach um, a four-step system, which is the online prosperity uh, blueprint. It's basically... Um, you know, how you capture your leads, how you create content for them, how you then convert them, and then how you connect with them so that they continuously refer other people to you, um, etc., etc. So I basically help small businesses like yourself grow essentially through digital marketing strategies, okay? So what we do basically is help you build systems in and around your work so that your business works out on autopilot and you're also working around the clock to make sure you've got your PR set up and your branding is working. So welcome aboard. Um, we would be, you know, today, today the topic that I'm talking about is basically um, revolving around the scenario that has been happening um, in Zimbabwe, where I'm from. So I'm not quite sure if you're well versed with the politics there. Uh, we've had a president for the last 37 years. And as of yesterday, um, in Zimbabwe, he did step down. So obviously, he has been ruling for the last 37 years, unchallenged, untamed. Um, but he didn't quite realize that the people were actually tired of him. So it prompted me to actually really start thinking about the bigger picture and how when we think that we know everything in and around our business, we actually know nothing. I want you to answer one of the questions that I have for you right now. Can you type in the comments there, what are you really marketing? All right. What is it that you're actually waking up and saying you're selling in order to make an income for your family? What are you actually marketing and you know, what, what is it that you're actually selling out there? I really, really want you to type it in and let me know what it is that you're marketing then. All right. Because you know what? I ask this question a lot of times uh, to the people that I speak to. Um, if you probably have not been well versed with my work, every single day I interview plus or minus three to five uh, different entrepreneurs that are really, really doing amazing things within their own niches. And half of them that I speak to, some of them don't quite know what their product is. Some of them don't quite know who their market is. Some of them don't quite know what it is exactly they are selling. And I also talk to clients of my own because behind the scenes, I own a digital marketing business, all right? So when somebody comes in and says, hey, Prosper, I want to work with you, etc., etc., before I accept them as a client, I ask them, what is it that you're actually marketing, all right? You see, you know, you know, whenever I take on clients and, and I ask them that, um, some of them are a little bit confused, as in why am I asking them that? I'm supposed to, to first of all know or I'm supposed to just give them the results that they're looking for. But um, it's only because they are only like a small business. They get caught up in the details. They get caught up in the features and the benefits of um, 
you know, whatever pro product or service that they're selling. You know what I mean? Because as small business owners, I don't want to lie to you. You've got fires. You've got to put out every single day your, your click funnels, your landing pages, your, um, your authenticity online, your social media, your Instagram, all of those things. And we get caught up in the details. You know what I mean? And we forget to really step outside of the picture so we can see the whole bigger frame. You know what I mean? And in case of marketing, it may, um, you know, it may, you know, it may mean that you really, really have to have maybe a two-year plan, a three-year plan, a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, or even a 20-year plan. Some of us don't even think as further than Friday. Some of us don't even think as further than two weeks. And that's the reason why every one of the people that is watching their business right now, the moment you stop working, the moment you stop working, your business is not going to last until the end of the week, um, you know, uh, or whatever week you've stopped working. You know why the reason is, why the reason for that is? We haven't put in any strategic plans, um, you know, to sustain that business. We haven't even got products that are recurring enough for people to want them for a very, very long time. We haven't got strategic partners that will carry on the business. If we're not there, we haven't even got a business to start off with. We're just trying to maybe sell something that we have right in front of us and hoping that it will yield some sort of value at the end of the day. We only have glorified websites, Facebook pages, and that's what we're calling businesses. So I typed, I asked you earlier on, what is it that you're actually marketing? I want you to type it in there. I mean, I'm not here to... Um, you know, get answers or whatever it is. This content that I'm creating is evergreen content that would last over and over and over again. So it's up to you to participate or just sit there and enjoy. You know what I mean? Because I'm putting this on YouTube. It will help somebody else. But if you really want to get the benefit since you're watching live, why don't you tell me what is it exactly that you actually market? All right. So no matter how big or small your business might be, or maybe you've been around for years or so, or maybe you've been around for however long. It is really, really, really vital to periodically step out of the frame, I mean, out of the picture so you can actually see um, the bigger frame. We really get caught up in, in, in all the daily dealings of our business and we don't even look at the larger canvas. Do you know what I mean? Generally, this is the biggest tactic that bigger businesses use and this will make or break um you know your marketing who you're going to talk to tomorrow how you're going to attract those strategic relationships how you're going to attract those clients and how it's going to increase your sales if you know where your business is headed to because how do you know when a perfect client has actually knocked on your doorstep if you don't have a bigger picture of where your business is going? How do you know when a perfect strategic partner has actually um, come around and said, hey, listen, let's collaborate and let's create something together? How will you know if you don't know what exactly it is that you're marketing? So when you adopt this larger you know, point of view, uh, it will actually help you have an effective position of where your business is currently and where it's headed and how many people and what sort of people do you need to include in it for it to grow and be sustainable. So how else are you going to motivate your prospects? How will you know that this is the right kind of person with the right kind of pain that your business can actually solve? Or are you just hooking whatever comes just because they have some sort of money to pay you for that particular month and then they realize that you guys are not aligned and once they realize that they go off and go to somebody else and leave a bad review for you? Now, what benefit is you getting today's money and a bad review tomorrow that is not going to help you in the long run? So what exactly are you actually marketing? Because when people feel like they've been taken for a ride, they leave a bad review. So what good is it for you taking money today and copying a bad review that won't be deleted on the internet? Because what's written on the internet is set in stone. You know? So I'm asking this question again. What is it that you're really marketing? And it's not what you think. It's not what you wake up every single day to, to um, you know, it's not what you wake up every single day to, to what do you call it? To, to sell to the people. Good day, uh, um, Alan. Good day, 
Robert, how's it going? You know? What is it exactly that you're marketing? Uh, Robert, today we're talking about um, looking at the bigger picture with your marketing. And I've been posing a question. What is it exactly that you're marketing? G'day, Alan. How's it going? Alan, I don't like your profile picture. That's the reason why I haven't accepted your friend request. Because it looks like you're sticking a finger at me and I don't, I don't feel comfortable with that. Okay? Cool stuff. All right. So this one thing. If you, if you haven't t attempted to answer this question, it is something that you really, really have to start thinking about. Do you know what I mean? You may be tempted to answer this question by maybe naming a product or a service that you are actually offering. Maybe you're offering a software. Maybe you're offering shoes. Maybe you're offering coaching. Maybe you're offering landscaping. Maybe you're offering consulting. Maybe you're offering tax preparation. Maybe you're offering friendship as a product. Whatever it is that you're providing. What is it that you're actually marketing? You know, when it comes to actually motivating people or your customers or your clients, they are always asking the one question, what's in it for me? Why should I sit around for the next 30 minutes listening to this guy? Why should I care? So what you basically as a person or as a business person, you should be marketing the benefits that your customer is going to enjoy. Right? Your customer is going to enjoy after using your product or your service. That's what you should be marketing. What is the customer going to enjoy after they've gone through your service? Are they going to have um, a business that's profitable and enjoyable? Are they going to have peace of mind? Are they going to have time with their family? Are they going to enjoy working with the people around them? Because that's what people want. So what is it exactly that your service is going to offer to the people you are, you are offering it? You know, for example, while your actual product or your software might help people um, save time or become successful or get more clients, etc., etc., you must market what the software helps users to do. Does it give them time with their family? Does it give them more peace of mind? What exactly is it that you're marketing? Because people don't care about, about you know, how good um, a car is or how, you know, fast the car is. People want to go from, play, from point A to point B. People don't care how good or how functional or how sleek a drill is. All they want is a, is a hole. All right? So customers who are going to be looking at your content, customers who are going to be looking at your, um, you know, advertising collateral or customers that are going to be taking any of your cold calls or looking at your Facebook ads, they always have one question in mind. What's in it for me? Why should I care to listen to Jamie, to listen to Maxwell, to, to listen to um, Paul or to listen to um, Peter? Why should I care? Because at the end of the day, all these people, they are being influenced to quite a lot of, uh, you know, they're being exposed to quite a lot of other providers. Why should they listen to you? It's a pen. Yes, of course. But what is it going to help me achieve? Is it going to help me write the best will for my family? Then maybe I should consider that. But if it's just going to spit ink like any other pen, why should I care? What's in it for me? So no marketing message is going to succeed unless it leads with the benefits that your customers can actually expect. And this will effectively position your business or your products or whatever services that you're offering as a totally unique to every Jack and Jill out there who's peddling uh, benefits or who's peddling um, features. And then from then on, once you actually know what it is exactly that you're marketing, you now build your communications around that message. You now build your, your website around that message. You know? What exactly are people getting? Because from what I know, everybody who's watching this wants to have a business that is making money, so that's profitable. They want to enjoy working 
on that business and not working in that business. That's exactly why I come out every single day at, at 2 p.m. AEST without fail so that I can be the person to help you achieve that. All right? And Scott says, post content with emotions that will match the feeling after wearing my clothing. Now, your clothing there, um, Scott, is, is clothing that people wear maybe to work or uniforms, etc., etc. The emotion that's there is if you are safe at work, your family would, 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 would see you more often. If you are safe at work, your family would enjoy it when you come back alive, untamed, and you can be able to work a lot more longer. You know why? Because you're using safety equipment that, that, that helps you not get hurt while you're, you're looking after your family. Something like that. Those are the sort of emotional strings you really want to be doing it for, for, for your kind of work there, um, Scott. Because at the end of the day, people don't care what you're selling. They care what the product will do for them. So that's what you should be marketing. And Jamie says, my pen comes with a feature and a goal. We have never seen short-sighted business, but the long-term relationships. You know, what I'm really trying to say is, look, get, get outside your business right now. Ask yourself, why would somebody pay me money to do what I'm doing right now? Can you type it in the comments there? Why would somebody pay you money to do what you're doing right now? Why would they pay you any money at all? Or would you pay yourself any money for what you do right now? Because once you, once you start thinking from that sort of level, you will start noticing that, yes, maybe you're not getting customers because you're not clearly expressing what's in it for the customer. You're not clearly expressing what it is that they would actually get after having dealt with your business. You know, because sometimes we, we, we get caught up in working inside our business that we, we tend to forget that people are actually paying us money. All right. But would you pay you money if you would be the person who is actually receiving it? I mean, I mean, who is who's actually paying somebody a service for providing what you're providing? Why would anyone pay you money for what you're doing? Why would anyone pay you a cent for what you're doing? Jamie says, um, I think it's the attentive person I am. I listen and I see the input in more about the business. I take time to invest in people. I am my best customer because I use what I teach. Exactly. But why would anyone else besides yourself pay you to do what you're doing for them? You know? People don't care what you're doing. They care what you can do for them. People are busy in life. And then once you've answered that question, find out who in the market would actually buy what you're selling. Who wants to buy what you're marketing? Who wants to buy it? Do you actually know? Is it a Prosper? Is it a, a, a Sandy? Is it a Jamie? Is it a Nick? Or is it a Nicola type of person that would purchase whatever service or goods that you're putting out there? Because have you ever noticed? Ah, oh, Sandy, how are you doing? I haven't seen your booking. I'm still waiting. So let me know when you want to have a chat. Have you ever noticed that, you know, um, you know how major sort of manufacturers, people that create cameras, or people that create uh, printing machines, they have products that are uniquely tailored to a niche market. You know what I mean? So maybe there's, there's a company, I think Canon, Canon for the printers. They may have one sort of, you know, the, the, the inkjet printer for a small to medium business. And then they have those standalone big heavy duty printers for the big, um, you know, printer, um, you know, printer needs. And then they also have those portable printers that a salesman can move around with that, that, that they can charge in the car. 
Those are very different products from the same person that have the same outcome, but they specifically appeal to different target audiences. Can you imagine an office building of 20 people using a small printer that only gets charged on a carport? Do you know what I mean? So you want to really, really start looking. Is there something adequately distinct about your products and services? What is actually totally, totally different about your products and services that people can't get anywhere else? You know? That only you are offering them. Because let's not get caught up in the fact that I offer coaching services. Do you think Sally down the road cannot coach your student? What is so unique about your service right now that people would, would trip, stumble and fall just to come and get it from you? What makes it particularly appealing to a specific person or group or market or a niche? So you want to sit down with yourself and figure out what exactly am I selling and why is it so different that anyone cannot replicate what I'm doing or they cannot just Google the answers and get it elsewhere? You know, so you want to create a profile of your best prof prospects. And uh, Robert says, that is my current task, finding out most likely target and that will be most receptive to what I offer. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, you just end up spraying and praying. You know, so you want to create a profile that, you know, that best of your best prospect. You, you probably have had really good clients before. Find out where did they come from? Why did they come to you? And why did they stay? Why did they stay is the most crucial thing right there. Find out from them. Ask them. Ring them up and say, hey, Sally, you stayed with me for five months, five years. Why did you stay with me? People are more than happy to tell you that. And once you know that answer, go 10x that, 20x that. And you start attracting the right kind of person with the right kind of pain so that you are not made obsolete in the market. And if you find any loopholes or whatever, go out there, modify whatever product it is or modify that service so that it suits your perfect customer. Because what's the point in you working with people that just work with you once and then pretty much after that they're gone and they leave a bad review? Because bad reviews are not the best, guys. You know, consider how it, it's just simple to, to, to change a bit of packaging and to add whatever response that actual people that have paid you actual money, um, you know, um, would make a difference to your, to your work. You know, how can your company now apply or your business, how can it now apply this intel that you've gotten from people that have actually paid you money? So that you attract your most targeted customer who knows what you're marketing, who appreciates your work, and who wants more of what you're, you're serving instead of you going always chasing after people that don't care jack diddly about what you have to say. Some people are just there for them to just collect information from you. Are you aware of who those people are? Are you aware that you're being of actual service to your audience? And once you've figured out all of this, why will your customers that you're targeting want to buy from you? I've asked this question and I can't see, I, I'm, I'm going back to it again. Let's face it. A lot of customers, they've got endless options. Some are cheap, some are faster, some are, um, you know, they'll do it for free if they can. But why would they want to pay you money for whatever you're charging them for? They have endless options. And when it comes to buy almost any kind of product or service, they can just Google it. Why would they pick up the phone and call you um, tough? Why would they pick up the phone and call you Maxell? Tav says because my deodorant is great. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Right. You know? Sometimes we might think we don't have any competition, but there's somebody who's viscerally looking at what you're doing and trying to do it cheaper, better, faster than you are. And it's likely that you're probably educating the market about the benefits of your product, you know, and other people are just behind you with a couple of steps just to grab your customers by the things, you know. I mean, you may own the category right now. You may be the go-to person. But is that going to be the same thing in the next five years? Are you going to still be the Don Dada in the next 10 years? So you really got to be figuring out how are you getting better? How are you actually serving the needs of the people that need your product and services? It is actually easier and less expensive to actually just ask, how can I save you better? How can I be a better person to you so that your business is, is profitable and enjoyable? And that's where innovation comes in because um, those people that are smarter than me say marketing is, 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 is all about innovating. Because if you're not changing, you're going to die with the market. Look at Koda. Look at Nokia. They got caught up in their head and look at Mugabe. They got caught up in the head of what it is that they're providing and they thought they got it good while their customers were searching elsewhere because their needs were not being met. So whatever you're doing, be sure you're el eliminating all elements that reduce your competitive edge. What are you marketing to the people and why would they specifically buy it from you and not buy from anybody else? And make it easy for people to make transactions with you. Because we are putting in all these obstacles. Once somebody has made a purchase from you, now you probably don't offer a delivering option or maybe you, you don't offer it in their currency. Don't make it hard. Don't make customers, you know, jump through hoops in order to get through to, to getting whatever it is they're paying for you. So at the end of the day, once you've answered my first two questions, what are you marketing and why would people buy from you? I think you're ready to take the final step to actually formulate a true and, and, and compelling value proposition that actually thumbs all the offers made by your competitors. Because if you know what you're marketing, no one will ever take that away from you and your customers would want more of that because it's unique and it's original to you. Trish says, hi, pro hey, Trish, how are you? <laughs> Long time no sprekenzi. I hope you've been aware. You've been all right. Um, uh, says long time, I agree using your client to educate you on what to do is valuable. Those who respectively use you will spread the word faster than you can imagine. Great points. Oh, thank you so much. Hope you've been well. Find out what exactly your customers want. Go back, create that if you haven't created it. Find out how you can provide it faster to them. Cheaper, better, faster, as long as you are happy providing that service. Ansley says, great points, Prosper. Hmm, I'm, I feel like I might have to go back to the drawing board and make some compelling changes. It doesn't necessarily have to be changes. You just need to know the answers to those questions. What are you marketing and why would people purchase from you and not Sally down the road? You know, we're almost getting into holiday season. People are just going to be making rushed purchases or timed purchases. Why would they purchase from you? You know? Thank you so much. We should have a chat and let's find out how you've been. It's been fantastic, hey? <laughs> All right, so at the end of the day, for marketing success, it really is a smart idea um, to have a habit of just looking at the bigger picture. Step outside of the, of, the, of, 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 the, of the frame and look at the bigger picture. You know? There couldn't be a better prescription for your business if you really want long-term growth. Constantly be asking yourself, is my message clear? Am I really servicing my clients in as much as they really want to? 
really, really, really looking at the bigger picture. No matter how small your business might be, make sure it is surviving past Friday, past next month, past the end of the year. Because if you're not looking at the bigger picture, you might just be standing there thinking that people are going to purchase from you while they're actually busy buying from somebody else. And if you've watched this video up until the end, please share this. It might also help somebody who wants a business that's profitable and enjoyable. All right. I really hope that you you are going to be working so hard in order to fulfill the needs of your customers because they're constantly asking themselves, what's in it for me? So every time you're putting out content out there, what, what are you hoping that the, the customer is going to achieve? What do you want them to think after they've watched your video, seen your content? How do you want them to feel and what do you want them to act after that? I really want you to win. I really want you to start taking what you're doing seriously because your customers really want you to win. But if you're not going out there to ask them how you can be of much more service, if you're not going out there really, really asking where you could get better or how you can improve on your service, then how do you know you're doing the right thing by your customers? All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to catch you on tomorrow as well at 2 p.m. AEST. Don't forget. And if you haven't shared any of my videos, maybe this is the first one that you're going to share. If you've done that, just type in shared. And I'll really, really appreciate that. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.